whether we like it or not, today, history is being made. And tomorrow, stories will be told. Books will be written about people, about you, about me. We are, in effect, writing our own lives. But someone said, in writing your life, don't let anyone hold your pen. This is what I want to ask you. Because the sun will rise and the sun will set. But when you depart from the earth, how will your story be told? Who is writing your story for you? Who is writing your story today? How is your story being told? How many people are influencing your life? How is your life being directed? There is one nation that God placed us in, and it is the most powerful nation because it is more powerful than the country you come from. It is more powerful than the most powerful country in the world. That nation is your imagination. How well are you using your imagination? It is believed that ideas become reality. All inventions that we see today were once somebody's ideas. People's ideas that materialized became the inventions that we know and we see today. What ideas are you bringing into this world? How well are you using your imagination? If you depart today, my question is, how will your story be told? We have seen great men that have come and gone. Above all, there are great men that we came to hear of. We heard their stories, though we never knew them. Though we never saw them, we heard their stories. And by the stories told of them, we identify them. I know of Jesus Christ because I know his story. I know of Abraham because I know his story. I know of David because I know his story. Not because I know them by name. Not because I've seen where Abraham lived. Not because I've seen the mansion that he built for himself and his sons and daughters. Great cities were once built, but in the course of history, they were pulled down. But great stories that were told, great stories that were made, remains and it is being told today. What are we trying to do? Build big houses, big mansions, rent apartments, the money that we need to buy a car is making us kill a man that can make a story. What stories are we making for ourselves today? When a story is told of you, how effective is it going to be on the generation that is yet to come? This is my question to you. Because it is far easier to live a life of mediocrity than it is to live a life of success. I can tell you one thing. It is very easy to teach men how to be successful. Let me tell you why. Because men were created to be successful. So the most difficult part of mankind is living to fail. Yet every man is spending most of our time living to fail. Yet we were created and equipped for success. So how we are living our lives today, is it going to give us success tomorrow? Or we are living in our failures of today and we are living towards the failure of tomorrow. The steps that we are taking today, where is it taking us to? Where you are going this afternoon, this morning, this evening? Where are you going? What is it taking you to? Every step we take today leads us to somewhere tomorrow. Tomorrow you will, you, you will reap the consequences of your actions. Above all, what we are doing with our lives today will determine the story that will be told of us tomorrow. There are people who have lived. There were no scribes then to write their stories. Yet decades later, their stories have been told. Whether they are accurate or not, they are the stories that have been handed over to us. And those are the stories that we believe in and we see today. And those are the stories that we use as examples. Those are the stories that stand as monuments that when we look upon, we know that there were great men yesterday. They were great men, there were great men in yesterday. In today, there are equally great men because God created all of us equally. 
And if you believe in the creation story, God created us for a purpose. Your purpose and how efficient you become in delivering it to mankind will determine how your story will be told tomorrow. We hear of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we are mesmerized. We understand how he came to save the world, how he came to bring deliverance unto all nations. But what we fail to realize is that Jesus Christ came to this world as an example of how a perfect man is supposed to be like. Because when God created man, he gave us this potential and ability that was enough for us to rule the earth so that every man could speak with a tree and let the tree die tomorrow. So that every man can speak to the storm and calm it down. So that every man can shut down the storm. So that every man can speak to the lion and, and mute the lion. So that every man will have the capacity because we were given the capacity to dominate. And we have this dominance hidden inside us. This giant that is living, that is lying dormant inside us. Most of us are going to the grave with this giant. And we are going to be judged according to how we used the giant that lies inside us. Whether we buried it like how it was told in the parable. Or whether we will expose it and multiply it like how it was told. How well are you using your giant? Every human being has a, a sleeping giant within him. The more you discover your giant, the more you discover this giant and give it a purpose in life, the more successful you will become. Success is not a one-day achievement. Success is a continual achievement. Success is what you do today to attain what you want tomorrow. Success is the steps you are taking today to attain what you want in the next hour or tomorrow. What steps are we taking at this moment? Where are those steps taking us to? Your success depends on the steps that you are taking today. So I am telling you to halt. Stop at where you are and ask yourself, where am I going? There are so many exits on the highway and yet they are all good. The best exit for you, however, depends on your destination. Your destination determines the exit you take on a highway. So if your destination, you've not reached your destination and you take any exit, it takes you to the wrong destination. And that is what makes the exit a bad exit for you. What exit are you moving on? Where are you going? On that highway, all the exit points, all the roads that are connected to the highway, they are all good because they all lead to somebody's destination. But is it your destination? We wake up this morning and people are calling us for unnecessary things. Have we planned ourselves? Have we planned our lives? Let me give you some tips. Plan your life well. When you plan your life well, it will mean well to you. It shall be well with you. Those who refuse to plan their lives are those who follow others and are used by others. Those who plan their lives when they wake up in the morning, they know what they are doing. When they wake up, they know where, what they are supposed to do and achieve in the afternoon. And they know what they are supposed to do and achieve in the evening. Every day I wake up and see people on the streets. People selling on the streets. People sweating on the streets. People who are doing all sort of jobs to earn money. But for what? Is it because we want to earn money so that we can feed ourselves? Then we are no different from animals. Then we are no different from monkeys. Then we are no different from sheep. The sheep in the domestic world have where they sleep. They have what they eat. They have clothing because they are always covered. But this is mediocrity. Human beings were not born to be like sheep. We were not born to, to, live searching, to live searching for what to eat, what to wear and where to sleep. We were born to be greater than that. This is the reason why God created man and didn't give him a shelter. Because what you are supposed to do in this world is not to find yourself a shelter. That is a secondary thing. I know very well that the day that God created man, the next day it might have rained, or maybe the sun shined, or maybe the wind blew. Yes, but God didn't give man shelter. God didn't give man clothes. God didn't give man cars. 
God didn't give man aeroplanes. God didn't give man roads. All these are secondary to our purpose in life. Our real purpose is what God gave us to do in this world. When we go back to Genesis and read and, and study why God created man, he needed a manager, somebody to manage the world, somebody to dominate and govern the world. And this is the reason why he made man. We were made to govern and dominate the world. We were not made to chase material things. We were not made to chase cars. I meet a young man today and he's saying that he wants to do everything to buy a car. Somebody opens up his mouth and says that if I buy a car today and die tomorrow, I will be happy. Yes, you may be happy that way. But the real reason why God created you is not to chase cars and be happy by, by with buying cars, but to discover a purpose and fulfill that assignment that he gave you. What purpose were you born to fulfill? What purpose were you created to fulfill? Above all, are we, are we living according to our purpose or we are living chasing material things? When we die tomorrow, are we going to the grave with those material things? Who on his deathbed has asked for his car? Who on his deathbed have asked for keys to his house? Who on his deathbed have asked for his clothes? We reflect on our lives, on our deathbeds. And this is where we are filled with regrets for failing to do what we could have done. It is believed that man cannot discover everything. But failure to discover all what we can do will lead to our regrets on our dying beds. I am challenging you today. If you are awake today, if you are stepping up today, take a minute to ask yourself, why am I going out? Above all, why am I living? Because it is better to be dead and not know life than to be alive and not know why. It is better to be dead and not know life than to be alive and not know why you are living. So take a minute and ask yourself, why do I still have life? Why am I still alive? After you ask that to yourself, sit down and reflect. If you get any answer, any answer that fits well in your moral reasoning, in your reasoning capacity, go back to your room. Stay with yourself for a minute or two. Write down what you have discovered today, a reason why you need to go out today. Write it down. Plan about it. He says that we should make plans by seeking advice. And when we wage war, we should obtain guidance. The guidance that we get today will bring us success tomorrow. After this, if you have people that can help you with what you have discovered or what you have thought of, consult them. You can equally consult any good person or you can pick up somebody, a life of somebody that resembles what you want to achieve and start learning from them. It is not too late to be meaningful in life. It is not too late to be purposeful in life. The reason why we were born still waits for us. The reason why we were created still waits for us. It is up to us to take the next step the first step in discovering it and then to fake, take the first step in living it and in delivering it to our generation and becoming fruitful. Our fruitfulness, however, depends on our seedfulness. How seedful are we? If we are seedful today, we will be fruitful tomorrow. Your fruitfulness de depends on what you are willing to put into your community today. A seed is of no use unless it is buried in the ground. A seed is of no use unless it is given out. What you are giving out today represents your seed. Is it your service? Is it your money that you are rendering? Is it a kind of service, a kind of work that you are doing for the betterment of your community? Do it well. Do it with all your heart. Like Mark Angelou, do it to fulfill a purpose that at the end of the day, when somebody takes your work, when somebody picks your work, they will know that somebody who had the seriousness of purpose delivered this to mankind. 
And then you must also discover that whatever you do today, you are not being scripted. The only script that we are meant to follow is the laws of nature and the word of God. Seek the word of God, but above all, follow the laws of nature. Natural laws exist. Whether you know them or not, they exist. And whether you know them or not, they are effective. Your ignorance of the effectiveness of electricity doesn't mean that it will spare you. If you don't know and you commit an error, you will bear the consequences. Therefore, let us inform ourselves. Let us take time to learn. Let us take time to inform ourselves of these basic laws of nature. Let us take time to inform ourselves of the basic laws and rules that govern our existence on the earth. As we go out today, let us go and be fruitful. When we return in the evening, let us sit down and count our blessings and discover our fruitfulness. Above all, let us carry a seed. As we step out today, let us be seedful unto humanity. Let us be seedful unto mankind. In being seedful today, we will be fruitful tomorrow. That when our trees become giant and our fruits start dropping down, the next generation will pick a fruit from that giant tree that you came to plant today. And that is how a story will be told of you. And that is how a story will be written of you. Your story will be told tomorrow. But is it going to be a good story or is it going to be a bad story? When our stories are used as examples, let us be, let us be good examples unto other people. Let us not be warnings, but rather good examples unto humanity. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube, Moti Minds. You can also find us on Facebook, Moti Minds, and all the other social media channels. We are Moti Minds. Our passion is to help people to discover their purpose in life and to live a creative life through planning. You can contact us if you need any help, if you need guidance, and if you need counseling. Our doors are always open and we will be there to assist you anytime you call on us. God bless you.